Welcome back. In this lesson, we want to continue with a check register that we created in a previous lesson. And we're going to start off with a very simple check register, and then later on we'll, we'll add some different elements to cache management. Uh, if you didn't create this check register, then what you'll want to do is get the instructions from me, and they're also on drive B. And so you'll want to go ahead and create this if you haven't done so already. So for those of you that do have this done, then we're going to go ahead and start putting in some transactions and calculating a cash balance here and just managing our checkbook. And so the location where we do that is this particular document called a check register, and it's where we record all of our payments and deposits uh, that we would make uh, during a particular uh, month. So I'm going to put some transactions in here for you to do, and if you want, you can uh, bring up this video and put it in a corner of the screen, split your space, your screen space, uh, so that you can do it at the same time. And so if you want to pause the video at this point and just go ahead and get that screen organized, this would be a good point to do that. All right, up first, let's do this. Let's get these cells, oh, A8 through A50. Let's, let's put a format of center, center format that right here. And then let's do the same thing for column B, all the way down to row 50. And we'll center that. Next up, let's navigate over to cell F7, and we're going to start off with a beginning balance, and we'll start off with $1,000. And if it's not already formatted in this accounting format, you should already know how to do that. There it is right here in our number formatting section of the toolbar. We're going to start off with $1,000. Next up, let's start spending some money, writing some checks. So we'll start off with the check 129. And we're going to start with the first of the year. So let's go ahead and put in a date, 1. And I'm using the 10 keypad that we learned previously. It makes inserting your information a lot faster if you can do that 10 key, especially when we're doing a lot of dates. But uh, forward slash, which of course is right above the number 8 on the 10 keypad. And so it's going to recognize this is date format. This is not one divided by, uh, as we have done when we do our formulas. So it's a short date format. So 1, 1, 16. And then with my thumb, I'm pressing the arrow key, the right arrow key. And so your date should look like that. If it doesn't, you might want to select back and just make sure that up here in the selection box that we have the date format. And we are using this one right here, short date. So if it comes up with anything else, like that, that's not what we're interested in. Not 42,370. We are interested in a short date right there. So make sure you ask any questions if you need some more clarification on that. Next up, let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's back up. Let's see. Let's take out that check number. Let's make a deposit first. We will keep that date, January 1st. And you notice in this category here, we have payments and deposits. So we're going to go ahead and assume that we got paid and that we have a nice job over at Sky Lakes Medical Center, working in the tech department, making a good living. Sky Lakes. Medical Center paid us for the month. Now, this won't be a check, but this will be a deposit because we are receiving our net pay for the month, and that's going to be, we're going to be generous and give you $5,500. So once again, delete that check number. Do keep the date. We just got paid from our new occupation, having just graduated from college, and Sky Lakes Medical Center got our first paycheck here on the first of the year for $5,500. Now we need to calculate a new balance. 
equal sign. Previous balance plus our current deposit. I'll do that one more time. Equal sign. Well, we start our formulas with that. Click on our previous balance plus new deposit. $5,500. Enter. And so now our balance in our checking account is $6,500. Now let's do that check 129. This will be on January 2nd. And we're going to pay Prudential and we're going to go ahead and pay for our life insurance. And that check amount is going to be, so this is a payment now, not a deposit. So we put it in the check amount column. And we're going to make that payment for, let's make that for $75. Give you a little time to finish that. And then we need to update our balance again. So this time we're going to start with the equal sign. Previous balance. But now we are spending money. Checks decrease our cash. So it's going to be minus the check amount of $75. And there's our current balance now. Decreased by $75. All right. I'm going to start. Rolling through these a little faster now. Check number 130 is next. And that's also going to be on the second. We are going to pay Pacific Power, pay our, make our electric payment. And Pacific Power is going to charge us $72.95. And equal sign previous balance minus check amount. And there is our new balance. Check number 131. Also on the second. Now, as it turns out with this check, we made a mistake. But we always keep track of our checks, even though we are not going to pay anybody check number 131. But we want to make sure that we have a record of check 131 so we, that we know that we made a mistake and so that we have essentially eliminated, destroyed it, or the term that we use in business is void, meaning that it is not available for payment and that we've probably scratched a line through it or uh, put, a, put a horizontal or a vertical line, horizontal line through it, or diagonal. Anyway, in some way we've shown that we are not going to use that check. And so then we can just enter amount of zero and show that it's void. But we want to always keep a record of checks, <coughs> excuse me, even the ones that we don't use. Now in this case, because we really didn't do anything here, we could go ahead and do the same formula. And we can just bring that down and it'll keep our balance the same. Essentially what it did is it took the previous balance and subtracted nothing and we still have a balance of $6,352.05. Check number 132. This will be on the third. And we're going to pay this to Toyota Credit Corporation. 
And this is our car payment. We've got a pretty nice car. $500 a month payment. Calculate the new balance. Previous balance minus the current payment. Sometimes known as a withdrawal. Deposits. Withdrawals. Payments would be another term. Check 133, Jock Supermarket. On the 4th. $47.45. Now, because we're doing the same formula, previous balance minus the payment, previous balance minus the payment each time, until we get to the point where we are making another deposit, we could go ahead and just copy this formula down. We don't have to keep creating it. And you recall that from many previous lessons. Make sure you're not there. That just moves the formula. Yeah, that's the move command. We want to make sure that we are on the black cross with no arrows. And we can use that fill command or the copy handle to bring that formula down. Check number 134. Also on the fourth. Going to pay that to Ed Staub. Fuel bill. $225. New balance. January 5th. Cal or telephone. $55. Check 136. We'll make this one on the 6th. Oops. Let's try that again. Get one of the arrows there, I think. I don't know what's happening here. What happened here? Oh, turned off num locks. That's why. Number lock was off, so it was just using the arrow keys. And we've got U.S. Cellular. With our cell phone. And we'll make that $75.79. Once again, we'll just copy that and run it faster. Okay. 137. On the 7th. Fred Meyer. Big shopping. Clothing, all kinds of stuff. Spend three hundred sixty-five dollars over there. Keep wanting to do that for them. I'm just going to copy that. Get that for me. Okay, go ahead and put your name here. Go to the bank and write a check to yourself. And you can do that. Uh, you could also go to the bank and write a check out to cash. But we're going to go ahead and put your name on there. And get yourself some cash at the bank.
another insurance bill. We'll make this auto insurance, paying that to Allstate. 129. I hear some of you thinking, boy, wouldn't it be easier just to go ahead and just put in all these check numbers, put in all the dates, Yes, it would, but real life doesn't work that way. We work left to right, one line at a time. That's how we spend money, not at the end of the month and load it all up. I'm going to keep track as we go. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, also on the 10th. I'm going to pay Ed Staub again. We'll make this a gasoline bill instead of a fuel oil bill. That's how we'll handle that one. $295.59. And do get these amounts right. We're going to do more with them later on. Favorite store, Walmart. Go to the movies. Took some friends. Paid for it. And next up we're going to have a deposit here. On the 19th. We got some money for our birthday. Somebody loves us. Oops, that would be a payment. We want to put that right here. $100. All right, now make sure you add it this time. So we do have to put a formula. We can't just copy it. If we copy it, we're probably going to have the same number. Yep, we don't want that. We need to add $100 to that number. So equal sign, previous balance, this time plus our new deposit. There we go. Now we can continue on with our checks. We like FFA. Found ourselves a couple of nice dinner tickets. Helping out the FFA. Previous balance minus forty dollars. Twentieth. How about Mount Shasta spring water? We like good drinking water, so we're going to do that. We'll make that for. $45.45. Now we can copy again. Time to get some new glasses. Little lens crafters. And what do we have? Lens Crafters, $135. G 
check. One of forty six. Also on the twenty first. Fred Meyer again. Notice it popped up there. Self complete or auto complete. And so if it's what we want to have type up there, then we just press enter or right arrow key and accept that auto fill or auto complete. Let's go buy some new furniture for our lovely home. Check 147, 22nd, closing in on the end of the month here. Uh, Home Depot, my favorite store. Tule Lake Medical Clinic. Well, healthcare. Right aid. Right aid. Well, right aid with an E or not? I'm not sure. Must be with an E. It is now. Got a prescription for 120. Oh, let's say we have some. Let's make it a copay. Ten dollars. We'll assume we have health care, health insurance. This medical clinic here, though, was our portion of the bill that was required for us to pay. Check 150. 24th. Jocks again. Auto complete. Thirty-five dollars. We'll make a payment to Bank of America for our student loan. $50. Couple more. Ah, here we go. Twenty-eight. Dish Network. Got our television. Big five sporting goods. Uh, 
So big five sporting goods, two hundred and fifty dollars. And we will end our transactions there. I had gone back and finished, uh, corrected that. We had just a little bit of a formatting issue there. I think I had it looking like that, general format. We needed that to be accounting format. And so what we can do uh, to finish off this for now, in our next lesson we'll take a look at uh, reconciling the month to make sure our balance agrees with that of the bank. But for now, what we can do is just to check of our total payments and total deposits. And so first we'll add up all of our payments for the month, see, see how much we're spending. It's always a good thing to know. So I'm just going to use the sum function. And so we spent $3,581.54, and then we can do the same thing, just add up all of our deposits. And there's our total deposits. All right, well, thank you for working through that, and I will see you in the next lesson, and we will take a look at reconciling our account for the month of January 2016.